Good evening guys. Today evening we would like to discuss a few things about myasthenia gravis. As always welcome to usmlevideos.net. Please take some time to visit us. As always we post daily videos based on requests from students visiting our website. And uh, this website is designed as a student to student resource so feel free to contact us at any time or you can leave your comments on our website or blogs tonight i want to take a few minutes to discuss this myasthenia gravis and uh, let us start with uh, presenting symptoms you see myasthenia gravis is a disease of motor and plate that's why it's very important to understand uh, the physiology before we discuss the presenting features of this problem. You remember how the nerve fibers are attached to each other, the chemical junction that is uh, interspersed with the synaptic cleft. So the acetylcholine receptors present on the postsynaptic nerve fibers are activated by the acetylcholine released from the vesicles located in the presynaptic fibers. So the presynaptic fibers they have the vesicles and these vesicles are filled with the acetylcholine and the calcium mediated activity opens up these vesicles then acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft and then the acetylcholine acts over the postsynaptic cleft. So that is the basic mechanism we all know from our anatomy and physiology classes. So in myasthenia gravis, basically what is happening is antibodies are produced that block the acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic nerve fibers. So the antibodies which are immune mediated, they block the acetylcholine receptors present in the postsynaptic fibers. So that creates the whole clinical picture. So because acetylcholine is blocked, what happens? There is no more muscular contraction. And there is no more muscular contraction, the patient cannot do activities like seeing eating, talking and doing certain things with his hands and feet. So basically this is a disease that affects the motor and the plate. Now there are other things that can present with the same clinical picture. For example lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome. You see in lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome what is affected is the presynaptic acetylcholine receptors. Antibodies are produced that affect the presynaptic acetylcholine vesicles. And as a result, again, there is inhibition of acetylcholine. And also poisoning by botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin, it impedes the calcium mediated release of the acetylcholine in the presynaptic nerve fibers. And as a result, acetylcholine activity is inhibited on the postsynaptic nerve fibers. So botulinum toxin, lambert myasthenic syndrome, they also present with the same clinical features as myasthenia gravis. Now let us talk a few minutes about the most common presenting features of this disease. You see, number one on the top of the list should be diplopia. Diplopia is the presenting feature. That's the most common presenting feature in 41% of the patients with myasthenia gravis. So diplopia is number one. You can actually ask the patient to gaze at a distant. And the patient as he looks and looks and looks like after two minutes because of that constant gaze is extraocular muscles get weakened and uh, he says he sees two pictures and he in fact has that uh, dropping of the eyelids. So those are the characteristic features and actually using that test you can actually clinically diagnose myasthenia gravis. So on the top of the list should be diplopia, then ptosis, 
then dysarthria patient cannot talk because some of the laryngeal muscles are affected some of the pharyngeal muscles are affected that's why he also has dysphagia he cannot eat swallowing problems some of the respiratory muscles are affected that's why he cannot breathe properly then lower extremity weakness because some of the skeletal muscles in the legs are affected he cannot walk properly he cannot go on the steps then generalized weakness he feels he cannot do anything then upper extremity weakness he have problem combing his hair and uh, using his hands and uh, putting jibs and writing everything is affected and then masticatory weakness he cannot eat because some of these masticatory muscles of mastication are affected so diplopia tersis dysarthria lower extremity weakness generalized weakness dysphagia upper extremity weakness masticatory weakness those are the presenting complaints of uh, myasthenia gravis so these presenting features are important to remember and uh, many patients actually complain that this weakness is very very constant in their life and uh, as usual you can diagnose this test by detecting the antibodies to the acetylcholine receptors and also you can use tensilon test tensilon test is very effective you want an immediate diagnosis of this condition and uh, in our next video we will talk about the treatment of myasthenia gravis so if you have any problems and uh, just give me an email or you can post some important points on our blogs visit us at www.usmlvideos.net that is www.usmlvideos.net and as usual this is dr paul thank you all for watching us have a good night and god bless you